really speak. You are really going to make a difference. You are taking the kingdom message. And this time, as because the, the, the way you sat and the, the concentration you are giving is because uh, you, you are differentiating what is truth from what is false. And uh, you, you are assimilating. There is an assimilation that was taking place. Yeah, so um, I hope that helps. And uh, just be, be ready for what is ahead of you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Thank Are there something? So awesome. Hey. Praise the Lord. Go, Jerry. Hey, brother. So, uh, Mr. Morgan, I, I got this picture. Uh, it's, uh, it's like this sweater. Uh, you know, this, uh, I think, I, I think I saw a sweater you are wearing a sweater or you're wearing a jump or something. But what I felt, what I saw was a sweater that is, uh, that is uh, not zipped. So what the Lord is like in a sweater that we wear it so that we will have count, we will have warmer. And there are some days we don't wear it because we feel like we can handle the warmer. So what I felt was uh, it, it will go uh, close with what uh, Papa Luke spoke. Like as you are comfort right now, you are comfort with the wordings and with, with the Holy Spirit. And for the, for the time, for this season, you are comfort. Now God is training you to a new place, new season. And for that, uh, God is equipping you, training you, teaching you, uh, so that yeah, he's making that comfortness, uh, comfortness, uh, boldness, the confidence. The sweater is confidence, boldness, the new, new season, new anointing, new love. God is free. So that uh, slowly, slowly, if you picture Ken right now, He's right now having a, a, ja a jacket over his t-shirt. And it's like this, you just sip it. And as, as, as you wait on the Lord, as you le get learned to uh, uh, get equipped and uh, bring that teaching into application, the zip comes up here, up to here. And that, that makes you feel warm to the next season and to go and, uh, go and uh, share it and go and step out into a new season. So that's... That's what I, I feel that the Lord is saying. Uh, Morgan, brother, uh, does that help you? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, bro, Jerry. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my Okay. Bro. So, so, Morgan, um, I saw uh, a picture of a dove. It was a white dove that was fluttering around um, from your shoulder, around your head, and then to the other side and back again, but just fluttering around and almost like, um, almost like speaking to you kind of thing. And I just felt the Lord was saying, you know, with the dove, uh, we often talk, uh, uh, see the dove as the Holy Spirit. We see the dove as peace, hope. Um, so I felt the Lord was saying that in this time and the times ahead, uh, he will be there with you at all times. Like uh, it's almost like when he was speaking to you and just fluttering around you, it's like uh, the verse that came to my mind was the peace of God that passes all human understanding uh, will guard your heart um, at all times. And I just felt that you can be at peace. Um, I felt the Lord saying you can be at peace in any situation because he's with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he's there like almost that speaking to you was almost like he's he's guiding you he's directing you he's he's having a chat with you he's he's just he's just having this conversation with you you know he he's with you um and i i hope that uh, makes sense to you morgan yes yes it does it does thank you so much pastor rebecca it makes sense. Awesome. Just uh, um, I, before the, if I want to give Bertha and Ken and Mercy a chance to also uh, uh, have a go at sharing the pictures. Um, so part of this process, remember, we're going from D1 today is D2, D3. D2, D3 is more instructional. So there'll be times where you need to stop and help someone and correct some of the things. So uh, Jerry, just be careful that you make sure you say, I feel the Lord is saying. That's an important thing because we want to give people the opportunity to accept or reject, especially if they come from a background where they feel they have to accept prof prophecy. I feel the Lord is saying it really helps. So I want you guys to slow down like I did with uh, Pastor Dwina. I said, was it, did you, you said, I, uh, I'm getting the color red. I said, were you getting, did you see it? 
Um, just making sure we're seeing pictures, make sure, makes, makes sense. So encouragement in them doing that, but instructional. Don't feel bad to instruct because I'll be telling everyone during the time we are going into D2, D3 process. It is training. Uh, we want to come out the best. We, we want heaven to give us the best way. We're using a methodology. It's not a theology, theology, but it is based around a theology and sound. It works, right? So D2, D3 is that correcting thing. Um, the, the other thing is that when you do your breakout rooms, you may want to do a hot seat. It, it, and, but if you're running out of time, then just, just give someone another person so they couple up and get the word for the other person. So either way, make sure that every single person in the breakout room has an opportunity and they're not feeling rushed. Okay, so we're not going to rush through it. We're going to take our time through it. Okay. Um, BG Ken, Mercy, got anything for Morgan? And for those who are just jumping in, you get to hear what we're doing uh, on a little bit of uh, practice. Yeah, I, I just uh, got something like hard with hard with the wire. So one heart, one heart, and with the wire. And I sense like the Lord say something about heart that um, whenever brother Morgan pray like he prays right away through his heart into the other person heart without even um, like talk a lot like the heart is just connected right away because that's what the Lord used uh, brother Morgan's heart to connect with others through the heart so that's that's what I sense that the Lord gave to brother Morgan that's powerful Others can mercy. Um, Have a go. Yeah. So uh, for Brother Morgan, I, I actually saw a picture of um, uh, actually start with uh, I can see a horse, yeah, a brown color horse actually um, running on the uh, on a meadow or yeah on a plane, and um. You can see actually, you know, is actually picking up momentum. It's is full of strength. Uh, just, just the uh, the details that you can actually see from it is is full of strength. And uh, it started just by seeing one horse, and then after that, you can see the whole herd of uh, horses actually coming together. Um, I think they all look yeah similar in color, and um, yeah. So, so I just feel a lot is actually saying to you, especially in the area of of ministry. Uh, you know, you might feel that uh, you're just lacking the uh, the strength to to move forward. But hey, you know, the the Holy Spirit is is actually giving you the strength, and you're gonna just get the momentum uh, by by focusing on what you are doing right now. And um, He's gonna also bring bring about a team that is alongside with you, and you know, a team that that is like minded, that has the same vision, uh, you know, towards the same destination, that is gonna team up with you um yeah in this in this area of ministry that you're doing so yeah does that make sense brother morgan yes yes thank you thank you thank you so much Keno. thank you that is so exciting mercy yes uh i i saw a picture of like um young man full of strength and might and like ready to go to the battle and i i saw that picture and 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 i asked the lord oh, what does it mean and he gave me the scripture judges 6 12 oh that's what i'm looking for the verse judges 6 verse 12 and the angel of the lord appeared to him and said to him the lord is with you you mighty man of valor that's what i got for, for brother morgan and i oh, found the lord is saying you know, sorry. Keep, keep going. Good. I thought the Lord is saying, you know, Morgan, despite what you are right now, or uh, not, uh, not to focus on the situation. You no, know, the Lord sees with exactly the opposite of what you are currently right now. You may feel like weak or you know, like um, disappointed, but the Lord said you are. He is with you, and He sees you as a mighty man of valor. Does it awesome. make sense? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Masi. What was the verse once again? Judges 6, verse 12. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, um, when you have someone like Mercy, I want, I, we want to commend, I want to commend Mercy a lot because Mercy 
naturally hears God's voice through scripture. And today she just chose to dig a little bit deeper and get a picture first and then bring it back to the scripture. Right? And well done, Mercy. And it, it, and it encouraged, I can descend again. Um, as you're leading, you begin to realize, I recognize the Holy Spirit clapping on these things and each of the words that you guys said are just causing this really exciting place of, for, for Morgan. Morgan, I don't know if you're sensing it, but there's such a powerful presence that's, that's built up through these words because the Holy Spirit is just clapping on this. Heaven's going, yay, you know, we, we're just wave after wave of throwing things into your lap and saying um, what you have and what you see is nothing compared to what is it's setting you up for and the journey that is uh, now and ahead. Amen. So we always want to pray over Morgan, but mercy, well done. Let me just stretch our hands over Morgan and to Morgan. Father, thank you for Morgan. Thank you for his life in Kenya, but thank you also for his impact that's going to be nationwide, that is going to be noticed and, and going to be communities to communities. It's going to be heart to heart connections. That's going to be uh, radical with Holy Spirit all wrapped around it. Thank you for the speed at which it will go and the momentum it will take. Thank you for the um, for the uh, capacity of this man to carry things that are uh, faithful and 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 just and and pure and heaven bound. And we just release every word right now spoken to Morgan. Release the angelic host around that carry these words of, of, of strength. We thank you for Holy Spirit reminder over Morgan today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What a joy. You want to wow. speak and throw it back to me after? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> wow, so awesome. Every time we, um, like, I think this must be about the fifth or sixth time that I'm doing uh, this particular uh, uh, series of training on hearing God's voice through pictures. But each time I do it, I learn something new or sharpen my skills, which is fantastic. Because as as uh, Pops Matthew always says, repetition leads to mastery. Amen. Um, so I'm sure there are others here who are doing it. Uh, some of you here who are doing it maybe for a second or third time. But it's fantastic because each time we get a little bit more, each time we sharpen our skills a little more. So today I'm going to hand over to um, Ruben. He will be facilitating today's uh, uh, meeting and also the next couple of uh, uh, sessions that we'll be running on the discipleship training as he uh, gets us to a place where we'll be, we will be hearing God's voice through pictures for ourselves, each and every one of us here. Amen. Ruben, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Rubika. What a blessing. Good to see everyone on. How is everyone feeling? Man, the week passes fast when you're having fun. Uh, good good to, uh, to be back here for a second week of training. And we really thank God for just before, if any of you jumped in and heard us giving words, this was uh, uh, the leadership preparing, prepping for you to serve you in, in a manner in the breakout room so you can really have uh, practical um, in, in what we're doing today. Um, just want to uh, start with, we, we believe that we can hear God's voice. I want you to start with just closing your eyes for a few minutes and just sensing if you get a picture for yourself and, and what that would look like. And sometimes it's really hard for us to do that because we don't believe God sometimes has awesome things for us. But I want you to Go past all that and just get a picture for yourself. And when you have, I want you to just write down that picture, just the picture you got when you've got that picture. You don't have to write down what it means or what you feel God is saying to you about it. Just start with what the picture is. For me, it was a diamond suspended in the air, spinning slowly. And just take your time. And if you need to close your eyes, do that. You can have your eyes open. But for this exercise, we just want to close our eyes and not be distracted by anything else. And uh, just take a you know, few breaths of the Ruah, the breath of God. 
and just inhale and exhale deeply this picture, this image that you see, and then write it down. And then once you've written it down, just close your eyes again and just, just let it ruminate, let it meditate on it. And don't worry about trying to find a, a meaning to it. I just want you to practice getting something in your imagination. So you're going to see it in your imagination, just like we saw the eagle last week. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Love that, Pops. <laughs> Make sure you saw that for me too. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So if you get something, just type it in. <clears throat> um, it's all right if you haven't got anything, but I want you to give it a go. Just closing your eyes, saying, God, what, what, what do you, how do you see me today? And this is an exercise that you can do every day. I, I would do it every morning when I woke up, every night before I went to sleep, I'd lay in my bed and say, heaven, would you speak to me and tell me what you think of me? And, and then I'd get these pictures. And I got to just, you know, start accepting how heaven saw me because heaven is not condemning. Heaven has those plans, the plans I know, the plans I have for you are plans for you to prosper, to give you a future and a hope, not to harm you. Hallelujah. I saw something. Can I tell? I'd like you to type it in if you can, please, my dear. Uh, but you can... it at the moment. Sorry? Uh, be difficult to type on the end and bow share. down. Share. I'll, allow, I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. Share it. Yeah, I'm not, uh, because in the beginning I didn't ask the picture for myself, but I said, what's the picture you have for me, as in gender? And I see a sun, a bright sun, radiating golden waves. I can't say, like, it's, the waves are going, dancing in the sky. Uh, the wave radiating from the sun, golden waves going up and down all over, like radiating out from the sun. I didn't ask, saying, God, how do you see me? I asked for a picture, but that's the picture I got. And that was to do with how he sees you, which is because that's the exercise that heaven already knows we're doing today. So excellent. That's okay if you didn't ask that, because that was the intention in which I have asked you to look for one. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Jeremy. But that is a picture of how God sees you. And uh, like I said to everyone, don't worry too much if you don't get an interpretation for it. Um, although I'd love to hear what Pops Matthew's interpretation is for his. But don't worry if you guys don't get an interpretation. There's no issue on that today. We're just learning, just basic, just jumping into getting a picture. Okay. Um, a deer running, awesome. Saw my face. Half was my face. The other half was a lion's face. Fabulous. Myself in a groom's gear on a wedding day. Yeah. What about others? There's about 20 plus connections here. So we want to see more. Give it a go. You don't have to try and work out what it is. It's just that this is what I see. And if it's if it sounds, um, you know, some of us have got this awesome biblical thing, and some of us have got this. I'm just dri I'm driving a Tesla. It doesn't matter which one it is, because God will speak to us in the language we get. And and sometimes we're just gonna bring it down out of religion <laughs> into a place of just this is what I saw. A wolf, a no, crown. No, 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 sorry, I interrupt you. I yes. should just pray before this is what uh, God has shown me to. Tsunami has come to everywhere. Like uh, the time is was now is this everywhere is flat water, but everyone to run. But the uh, rope, life rope coming from heaven to sky, drop it. Everyone trust in us, trust in me, grab the rope came up awesome. and that is everyone grabbed the rope to, to hold the rope to jump it go up that is i saw that this picture to the i don't know but this god is uh, 
is awesome. powerful. They say rope is uh, is uh, rope of the life, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Nathan. So that will apply for how God sees you today. And so uh, just keep that in your mind. And and if you can, you know, it's great that you guys are writing these down because then as you write them down, they should become more ingrained in you. Because we're going to start asking God uh, over the week to come how he sees us and then try to get interpretation for it. All right. So that's really important. That's great. Seeing some more here. Mary, a tree by the river, roots outside, plenty sunshine brightly. Uh, and reminds you of someone awesome, Edwina or John, I think. Was it Edwina who wrote that? Fern, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lush green in the shade. It sounds like you, Edwina. Uh, Fern, lush green um, in the shade, and unfur- furling as the sun shines, refreshing and nourishing. Awesome. Papa Luke Beach filled with palm trees. Nice. Uh, Suryadi, hey, welcome, bro. Climbing the mountains and facing the beautiful valley. Wow. Okay. Um, love it. Pops. Everyone else, we got we got natural stuff. You got this Tesla. What's going on? What what do you feel God is saying to you? I, just, I, I gotta hear this. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I, look, the thing that immediately the the came the Tesla picture came in. So to me, what I believe the Lord is telling me uh, is that look, you know, normally when you see Teslas, they're not very commonly seen, mm. and uh, it is uh, people get drawn to it. Uh, so you know we as you know we are like ambassadors who are whenever we go there you know we are not like broadcasting ourselves, uh, but people will take notice of us whenever we go, whatever we speak, whenever we say something, uh, people will take notice. So we they will take pay attention to us. Uh, so that's a, that's the interpretation of what I feel that God is saying when you speak, when you open your mouth, people will be drawn to you, people will listen to you. Love it. Low profile, high impact, as we call yep, it. That's it. Love yeah. it. Awesome. <laughs> In fact, I was dropping my daughter um, two days ago uh, for work. And, and as I was reversing uh, Tesla there and I'm driving by and I'm looking in because <laughs> <laughs> it's a rarity. <laughs> yeah. so, so true. Um, love it. Awesome. So the, the model is I will be I will probably see myself in a Tesla within the next few months. <laughs> Amen. Me too. Me too. So that's counted as two. Wonderful. Well done, guys. And those who are writing, keep writing. A uh, few more coming through. Uh, John uh, leaping a high fence and running up a wall. Samuel, a tree around the riverside. So you've seen what Pops Matthews has an interpretation about the, um, about the Tesla um, and how God saw him um, in, in that position, but also how he saw all of us as ambassadors. So that's really exciting. Uh, it is hard sometimes uh, for us to get a word. It's very humbling to get a word from heaven. Because heaven sees the best in us. And, um, you know, it's humbling when we recognize how much sometimes we even mess up. And yet all heaven sees is the best in us. Because the Holy Spirit comes to convict us of our righteousness. Amen. Not of our sin, because we are believers. Uh, it's of our righteousness. And that's what it says in the book of John. And that is so exciting when, he's, when, he, when he reminds us of that. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. I'm just going to share my screen. And hopefully you will see something showing up right now. And let's see if it works. Yes, it is. And this is the wrong slide. Wonderful. Okay, so this is lesson two. If for some reason you have missed lesson one, um, we set foundation in lesson one about how we hear from God. And uh, please go listen to the video. If you haven't already, the recording, it's on our YouTube channel. And if you're not sure where, just write to me and I'll send you the details. Um, so we're building from this. It's, uh, we talk about the 4D process. So we are building from this. And it's very exciting hearing God. Um, because if you look at the right-hand side, the motive behind this is not just being disciple, but learning how to evangelize to others. When you can hear God, there are a few tools where we can actually start to naturally speak to others. And as you start speaking to others with God's best intent for them, wow, powerful things happen. Amen. It's also an intent to evangelize nations. It's also an intent to evangelize your communities. Amen. Does that make sense? So 
So it's not just us getting disciplined and discipled in this, it's us learning a skill for the rest of our lives. And once you learn how to do this, and it's just amazing where we can go from this. So we're going to start off with some declarations. And um, I want you guys to unmute, and we're going to do this together. Um, so it's from the questions we asked last week. This is the first declaration that I want you to speak with me on. So it'll be basically, I'm going to be speaking this out. We're going to do it together. It's God wants to speak to me as a believer and child of God. Right? That's what we're going to do. So let's unmute and let's do it together. God, God wants to speak to me as a believer and a child of God. Amen. To the next one. I desire the gift of the Holy Spirit, especially to prophesy. prophesy. Amen. How awesome is that? Okay. So we're saying, I desire it. Why? Because this is powerful. Okay. So let's uh, read those two again. God wants to speak to me, the deliver of the child of God. I desire Wonderful. Here's the next one. Let's read it together. Heaven, Heaven is, is always, always broadcasting, broadcasting thing to me. me. I am I am too into hear, hear, see, feel, feel, sense, and smell the kingdom of God in the world around me. Wow. Can you hear the synchronization uh, happening over our words as we start to do this? So um, let's say, say these two lines, these two sentences again. Heaven, Heaven is always broadcasting to me. I am here to hear, see, feel, sense, smell, smell, and keep the truth for myself and the world around me. Now, uh, I'm just going to pause for a minute before we go to the next one. So, uh, I had a really great question last week after the session saying, um, uh, how do you know heaven's always broadcasting to me? My answer was, how do you not know that heaven's always broadcasting to you? He goes, what do you mean? I go, well, you know, it's so easy to say how things aren't, what if they are? And so Isaiah 6, 2 says, and one cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is it's full of what? Glory. What is glory? That word glory is, is kabat, um, which is the glory that came into the tabernacle in the old covenant. Who are the glory carriers today? Us. Yeah. So when the glory came, it communicated. The glory came once a year, holy of holies, when the high priests presented themselves to God. Um, and Jesus said today, we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. That means, and he said, he will never leave us, nor forsake us. Amen. Which means we have the glory, we are glory carriers, earthen vessels carrying the glory of God, which means glory always communicates. Anyone with me on this? Amen. So you got to believe it because heaven's always broadcasting. And we might go, oh, crikey, now I have to be careful what I do because heaven's always with me. Well, heaven's always with you no matter what you do. And heaven runs to you even when you do the wrong thing. Doesn't run away from you. Doesn't condone it, but doesn't condemn you. Amen. Convicts you of your righteousness. So let's say that again. Heaven is always broadcasting to me. I am myself and the world around me. Amen. Sorry. Love this picture here. Let's do one more. This again, answering what this is a kind of summary from last week, but it's now in declarative format. Let's go. Today, Today I choose to let heaven speak to me. Heaven is in the mind, is in the mind of my spirit, imagination. Amen. Let's say that again if you believe it. Today, Today I choose to let heaven speak to me. 
So we're believing God that our imagination and our spirit mind work together for this. Okay, it says be continued renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature created in God's image, God-like in the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. How awesome is that? That is powerful. Amen. Um, and Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. That is beautiful. So, one more, but I'm just going to... But there's a broken glass on the high. I'm muting, so I'm going to mute everyone right now. So I'm going to just stop my share for a second to do that. Here we go. And Rubika, I'm just going to give you, which I forgot to do, just give you co hosting. So you can help me with the muting, please. Thank you. Wonderful. How many of you are getting excited about this? I mean, I love this picture. It just really excites me. Te connects me more to what heaven's trying to do. Um, so then we talked about hearing God through prophetic pictures. And um, remember, I gave you some examples of how God hears us. And uh, so I wanted to, to, and I talked about it. Uh, we need to be in the spirit. We need to see uh, and we need to hear. All right. So we're going to say this together. And um, I want to say it together. Here we go today. I choose to be in the spirit. I see a picture vision and hear a word. Okay. I know you're muted, but you can say it, say it loud to yourself. Say it loud to the person next to you. Let's say it again. Today, I choose to be in the spirit, see a picture, hear a word. Okay. And we had these examples from yesterday, uh, from last week, sorry, um, that gave you an example of how God speaks to prophetic pictures. Remember, there's many ways God speaks to us, um, but we need to speak through the, we're going to learn one way, which is through prophetic pictures. We also remembered, hopefully you remember this, and I want you to remember, remind yourself of this, that you are in the spirit because Romans 9 says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if, if, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. All right. So in the chat group, would you put a, a yes if you believe that you are in the spirit just because the spirit of God dwells in you? Not because you've got the anointing right now because of the presence of God. You might feel that, but that doesn't mean that now the spirit came upon you. This is that you're always in the spirit. Amen. Awesome, guys. We're on the same track. So these are the stuff that we've been learning from last week that we're now changed into a prophetic declaration. How exciting. Okay, This is how prayer redirect begins to work. Last... Um, Last week, we talked about just from thinking of, uh, I gave you a, a picture, a word, a word picture. And I said, think of an eagle. And each of you got an eagle and each of it was different. And then you used that to kind of hear what God was saying to you about the eagle. And it was really exciting. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to do this week is we're going to step into a bit more training. And one of the things we've recognized is that getting a prophetic picture for others is sometimes easier than getting a word for ourselves. Okay, so we want to start there. Everyone okay with that? Um, Rubika, if you don't mind just muting everyone for me, that'll be really great. So getting a prophetic picture for others is sometimes easier than getting a word for ourselves. Okay, and what I've found is that sometimes um, the reason for that is because when I get a word for myself, um, I, I used to struggle to, to recognize that all heaven sees is good news for me. Now, heaven's not pretending that there's stuff in me that needs to be sorted out and cleaned up and matured into, but heaven's not declaring my doom or my gloom. Heaven's declaring the best he has for me. Amen? Everyone okay with that? And so I used to struggle getting words for myself first. So I got confident by helping, by getting words for others because they'd give me feedback and go, oh, that's really great. That's so true. That actually makes sense. In fact, the picture you just saw is totally in line with what I was seeing. Um, I remember recall a time where um, um, I got a picture for someone, um, a prophetic picture for someone, and they were sitting there. I'd never met them before. They came for one of our prayer meetings, and and as they were sitting there, and they were not a not really a, a, a believer as such. And as they're sitting there, 
um, I saw this person dressed in kingly costume with a crown, royal crown, like the old, like the um, uh, days of the Queen of the Queen of England's uh, entourage, with this beautiful robe around them, with the fluffy white collar thing, and uh, and then dressed so well. And the officer, I looked down at their at their shoes, and they were wearing white sneakers. Like, what what's that about? Did not understand that picture, but I gave it out. And, and the man I gave it to, his wife just cracked up laughing and said, you know, this guy loves white sneakers. Like he's always wearing white sneakers, nothing else. And so the word, because I had never met him and it was a word that I would not have known and a picture word from heaven, it encouraged him, but it also encouraged me to build up my confidence. Make sense? Okay. The other day, Friday, Shami is here and she'll, she'll, she'll attest to this. Uh, we were in a prayer meeting and um and i just had a prophetic word for shami and i said i saw a rainbow it was getting brighter um and i saw a red car that you're uh, driving a red car on the rainbow and i began to, to describe more stuff about it and she got so excited she said do you know that i just had uh, took my car for a journey with uh, and it broke down halfway where to go to a um to a to to a mechanic and it was raining with uh, pelting down with rain and as i was looking up um, I saw this amazing rainbow, right? And and I said, you know, just let's pray that this car gets fixed. And I go, let's pray that we get a new car because your car was white. I saw a red car. Oh, let's believe God for a brand new car. Amen. Now that was really exciting to me because I had no clue that she'd gone through that. And so sometimes getting a prophetic for others is easier than getting a word for ourselves. Okay, so we're going to start there this week. And uh, how do we start there? We're going to remind you of the 4D process. You have seen a lot of us doing and you've been watching. You had a little bit of, um, of jumping in and testing out. We're going to go into this D2, D3 process today, which is I do you help. Uh, more the D2 process, I should say, which is going from an unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence. What that simply means is it's a process of today. It'll be very, there's going to be some processes. There's going to be some steps. It's going to be quite instructional for your benefit so that you learn and ingrain a way to hear God, okay? So if you're ready to go, please put a one in the chat group. If you're saying, yes, I'm ready for this and I'm ready for my, for my leaders to teach me in the breakout rooms, for my leader to teach me right now, um, as we or my instructor, as we instruct, uh, we're on the right, right way, all right? Awesome for those who put a one. And if you put a one, I want you now to put a two and say, I'm ready for the D2 process. So pop a two in if you're ready for the D2 process, which is, very instructional, process-driven. Um, there might be some corrections along the way, but there's no condemnation. If you have, uh, this is where you practice. Get excited about practicing in this in this room, okay? So seven-step process to activating, hearing, go through prophetic pictures. There is a process that I'm going to be going through with you, and <clears throat> there's seven steps to it, and we're going to walk through these steps for the rest of the training today and then in the in the rooms you're going to have a go at practicing this and you're going to have leaders who are very competent in this who know what they're doing they they have done this before with me and we were just been training them up even in the prep room again knowing that they will help you with this and instruct you okay i want you to understand that this seven step is what we call a methodology it is not a theology it's based on a theology what i mean by that is some people um, may take this and go, this is the only way God can speak to me. I'm not saying that. This is one of the many ways God can speak to you. But if you don't learn a, a way, you might find no way to be able to confidently hear God regularly. As you've heard Pastor Rubika say, and I'm going to throw it to her in a minute to give you her testimony, that she has seen this, made this methodology based on a theology into a lifestyle now. Amen. Because once you get a methodology into a lifestyle, then you can innovate it whatever way you want. But the best way we say of transformation is through imitation. Okay. So it's just based on a theology, but it is a methodology. So it's like there's many ways to, um, to, to, to heat up water. You can use a kettle. You can use, um, you can use the fire. Um, you can, uh, if you've got hot enough hands, I guess you could heat up your, your, your water. Um, there's different ways to heat up water, different methods, but the process of it is to heat it up, okay? And each method will have a process steps behind it. If I'm going to use a kettle, it could be electric or stove, and if it's an electric kettle, I'd say, well, wash the kettle first, fill it with water, uh, put it on the, on the element, plug it in, 
and and press the button for it to heat up right if it's on the stove i might do the first few steps and then say put on the stove turn the the gas on if it's gas and wait for it to bubble um enough and frequently and for uh, for 30 seconds or a minute uh, before you turn it off knowing that it's reached its 100 degrees celsius okay so um those are me those are methodologies and this, this is a methodology we're going to use um rubika how has this helped you Okay, so before I did this training, I used to be really scared <laughs> uh, when asked to get a picture for someone um, because I, I was worried that the picture I got would not be what God was putting in my, in my mind. Um, so one thing that helped me was the fact that, um, as we saw today, we have the mind of Christ. And the second thing that helped me is if I ask my father in heaven for something, he's not going to give me something else or not hear me at all. So a natural parent, if a, if a child asks them for something, they're not going to, uh, and they've said that they'll give it to them, they're not going to then turn around and not give it to them for no reason. Um, so with how much more our father in heaven, if he has said, ask and I will give, then well, and that we have the mind of Christ, then if I ask him for a picture, I have to trust that the first picture that comes to my mind is from him um, because I've asked him. Uh, and then this set of seven steps really helped me because it helped me to focus. It helped me to, to forget about thinking about it, but just to focus on the process. And by doing that, it just helped me to go through, okay, first I've got to get a picture and then I've got to uh, start to describe it. And then when I start to describe it, I say, I feel the Lord is saying, and then um, as Ruben will go on to explain, the Holy Spirit begins to show you what it means. Um, and that really, really helped me. It really helped me to get over that fear. Uh, first of all, knowing that my father will, uh, if I ask him, he'll give me a picture. And the second thing is that the picture that I get cannot be from anywhere else because I've asked the father and I have the mind of Christ. And the third thing is that if I follow this procedure, then my mind won't be going everywhere till I learn it. Now that I've learned it, it's sort of become automatic and I don't have to go back and look at these steps, but it's already in my mind. Amen. Tell us about the time uh, in Indonesia. I love that time. And even in Malaysia, but Indonesia, tell us about the Indonesia one. Okay, so in Indonesia, so this was just when I had, when I had just started seeing pictures. So I was still quite, um, uh, quite, you know, like unsure and things like that. And anyway, there's this lady from uh, who was sitting at the back of the church. And Ruben had said just before we started the service, can you please um, see if there are words for anybody there? And Jiggy James was there. So Jerry, you might remember this. But anyway, there was this lady at the back of the church. And um, every time I looked at her face, I saw this ice cream. And I saw this huge ice cream and it was standing on, on, its, on, the, on the pinnacle, you know, of, its, um, of the cone. And we all know that ice creams, <laughs> if they stood like that, they'd probably topple over. But it was standing like that and I saw it so sweet with all these sprinkles and everything like that. And I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, Father, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, but <laughs> I don't know what it means. Anyway afterwards when we were giving the, the pictures I, I said to the lady look you know I saw this picture of an ice cream and I felt that this ice cream cone was you standing there in the street um, and that people around you were just attracted to you and just wanted to come and know more and and just be around you and then she started crying <laughs> I thought, oh boy <laughs> and then she said you know I'm from Australia. I came all the way here for God to speak to me and tell me that. Um, and I said, I felt the Lord is saying that you're this ice cream cone and that, you know, people will be attracted to you. And she said, you know, it's amazing because I just I just needed an encouragement that what I was doing meant something to others. And it just really touched her heart. So plus <laughs> what has she just done before she came for the service? Uh Oh, remind that? me of that. I she can't. Just bought, she just bought an ice cream. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. She just bought the ice cream and you described some colors in the ice cream was exactly the same. It was How the same. Often, and and uh, if you think that's non-spiritual, the, the <laughs> amount of tears that came from the woman, the presence of the Holy Spirit that came in was powerful. Um, and, and just want to encourage you that don't try to spiritualize, over-spiritualize things. I tend to sometimes do that because of my having grown up in the church from the time I was a kid. 
Um, but when God said to Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I saw, I see a pot um, or I see a stick. Um, it was probably just the natural things he saw around him that he saw that happening. Amen. Yeah. And Actually, so God, yeah, so, sorry, Ruben, can I just share what I saw on Sunday, which I thought was really odd, <laughs> like at first, because on Sunday uh, we were having our normal service and everybody was sharing about God's love and how they felt his presence in, in, the, in the room and through worship. And it was all about love. And all I could see were these Olympic circles. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, boy, Lord, what does that mean? And how am I going to interpret that? Because I don't see anything about love. Like, to me, it doesn't speak of love. It speaks of winning or, or a race or some kind of competition. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I won't share this. I'm not too sure about this. And then Ruben turns around and goes, okay, Rubika, do you have anything there to say? <laughs> and so I shared it. <laughs> And it's amazing because it touched two people. One confirmed that they, 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 the service they'd gone to in the morning, um, it was the same thing about being winners and something to do with the Olympics. Um, so it was like a confirmation to her of what she had been told. And to another person, it was that the colors of the Olympic circles and the fact that it was you know, about a winner uh, meant something to them. So sometimes we think it doesn't mean anything, but it actually means something to the other person. Thank you, Ruben. Awesome. Thank you. So, guys, we're going to just uh, work through this seven-step process right now. I'm going to talk through it, then we're going to do an example of it. And we're going to show you here, then we're going to break out rooms. You don't have to get it all today. We've got four weeks of training. This is week two, and we're just getting into more practical now. Last week, we just laid the foundations from a scriptural basis and what the Spirit of God was saying. And then today we're moving into this. How awesome it is, would it be that we are training up to be a company of prophets that can speak out as God has spoken over the nations, and that we can speak out heaven's plan, not heaven's condemnation, because there is no condemnation from heaven. Uh, if we're in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. If we're not in Christ Jesus, the Bible says we condemn ourselves, uh, but Jesus has not come to condemn us. Amen. And that is exciting. That's a blessing to bring people to a place from a non-condemning way of the love of Christ that changes and transforms us. So number one is ask God for an encouragement picture for someone. In the new covenant, um, the prophetic is, is uh, for the believer. As the office of the prophet, which is a little bit different, the prophetic for the believer is always for encouragement, for uplifting, for strengthening, for comforting. And if you have not got any of those four things, then during this training time, we'll stop you and, and say to you, hey, um, this is not for judgment. This is not for telling them how bad they are. And if they do this, God's going to do this to them and blah, blah, blah. That's all covenant stuff that was done in a season. And there's some interesting reasons around how they were done um, and why. But today when Jesus came, he said he came and everything is built on the prophets and the apostles, the first being Jesus Christ. Amen. And when Jesus came, the only people he ever spoke harshly to were the religious people everyone else there was such that love that came of what was needed he still loved the religious by the way but he he's prophetic and anything that paul spoke about and the apostles spoke prof prophesying was to uplift was to encourage was to strengthen okay so i ask god for an encouragement picture and we're going for a picture today not a scripture not um a feeling or a sense even though god can speak to us through these ways we're learning through one way and show it's a picture first not a feeling or a word i think i just said that um, try and keep your eyes open while you get the picture. Now, at the start, you might find that difficult because we might be just naturally used to closing our eyes and, and praying. But as you go along and develop this, why this is exciting is that you become non-religious and non-threatening and open to, to evangelize to those who don't know Jesus. Because I walk up into a, I can walk up into a shopping center and go up to someone and while my eyes are open, engage with them in natural language and give them a word that will impact them, rather than walking up to them and going, the dust says the Lord, oh, hold on a minute, I'm going to tell you. And that, that's great when I'm in church. I'll do that in church because that's the culture of the church, right? But when I'm outside and when we go to the, when we go to the centers, um, sometimes we go to the skate park and we're in the skate park and I'm mini, I'm, I'm, I have a word for a, for a kid who's just a 15-year-old kid who's riding his bike and just being rough and tough and doesn't know anything about anything about church, then I'll just go, hey, you know, I've got to, I, sometimes I get to hear stuff from, from up above. Uh, might sound a bit 
uh, silly, uh, but I've been hearing it. it's been accurate. And I got some stuff for you. Can I share it with you? And my eyes are open. I'm not close my eyes while I'm chatting with him. And I've seen time and time again, people giving their hearts to the Lord and from different cultures, from different places saying, how do you do that? How is that so accurate? Um, how does that make sense? When I'm in church, I'll do it the church way just to make people feel comfortable. I'll do the, the, the speaking in tongues. I'll do the um, prophesying over, not so much with you guys. You don't see that because I, you know, you've been learning and growing with us, but I'll do that to make them feel comfortable. Use the picture you've got to describe, communicate and encouragement to the person. And this is how you kind of start doing it. You describe the picture, then say, I feel the Lord is saying, and then you describe the picture again and let the Holy Spirit help you to interpret. And this is where there is no process. As you set this up and activate it, you get to this place where the Holy Spirit starts to give you interpretation for this, for the picture you saw. And it's exciting. And everyone in our classes, we've trained hundreds of people around the nations. And I'm not exaggerating because sometimes ministers can exaggerate a little bit. Um, literally hundreds around the nations and Pastor John and Pastor Edwina here from, from Malaysia that can attest to what we did there. And we've been Indonesia, Africa, different countries in Africa and Australia. And say, not saying that to blow our trumpet, but to say that we've never seen anyone leave without getting a picture through our training. Everyone's getting it. Now you've got to keep at it because um, repetition leads to mastery. Ask the person, does that make sense to you? Okay. Because why? You're giving them an invitation. Now, just on number five, I do say, I feel the Lord is saying. I don't say, thus says the Lord. I don't say, God is saying. The reason I say, I feel the Lord is saying is because it's an invitation for people to test and accept or reject. I don't want them to have to say they have no choice in this. Because they've put up their walls, especially if they've come from a culture where they've been taught that whatever the prophet says, you've got to do. And if you don't do it, doom and gloom, right? So I found just by saying, I feel the Lord is saying, it doesn't take away from my confidence of what God is saying, but it gives permission to the other person to say, I accept it or I reject it. Because my job is to, is to, is to release it, right? Your job as, as in the prophetic is to release it. It's up to the person whether they want to receive it or not. And I give them that opportunity because I want to keep the relationship with them. I don't dust my, my feet off and leave them if they reject it. I give them that opportunity of, uh, of, that, of that invitation uh, with a slight challenge towards it. Okay, I remember a time we were in the skate park and there was this 21-year-old guy. And I think he was from uh, some part of Africa. I can't remember. I think he was Sudanese, if I remember right. No, or, or he could have been from Africa. No, yes, he was part from from. Uh, from Africa. Anyway, he sat down with me and we were just having a chit chat, having a barbecue together. And, and as I was talking to him, the Lord showed me some stuff that's happened in his life that's wrecked him. He's left home. He's, he's got problems with his dad, um, nearly got killed uh, recently. And, I'm sh and I just said to him, can I just share some stuff that's happening um, that the Lord is showing me, that, that not the Lord I use, that God's just showing me. And, and he goes, yeah, man, sure. And I, and I started sharing about stuff that happened in his past that I felt God was saying. I've never met him before. And he's like, he used some colorful language. And he goes, how did you know that? And I go, I don't know this stuff, but God knows you so well and he loves you. And can I tell you about the future? And I told him about the future. And I said, now it's an invitation for you because that future that you have. And he's like, wow. And it was a future about his, his career and a future about um, what he had been called to do and his calling is like, wow, this, how do you know this stuff? This is my passion, but I don't know if I can ever do this because of what's happened in the past. And I go, well, you have a choice. Depends on who you hang around with. And so it was an invitation with a little bit of a challenge that left him in a place where he could never say, God, you never spoke to me. Amen. And so I love that. I love using this in just natural evangelism every day. Um, pray for the person, number seven, and activate a Holy Spirit experience in their life. Um, the, you know, if you notice, that's the last thing we do. We don't start with the Holy Spirit mumbo jumbo, even though we have Holy Spirit in us. But we start with a natural way of responding to people. And, and so you'll be learning that today in the group as well. All right. So I want to um, just remind you, as, as I said before, that this is training time. So they're going to go through the 4D process. I want to remind you of this healthy prophetic culture. Um, you have permission to practice. Come on, put that, put your hand on your heart and say, I have permission to practice. Um, say it out loud. I have permission to practice. Scare yourself if you need to. I have permission to practice. 
Uh, because 1 Corinthians 14, 29 says, let them prophesy two or three at a time and let the others test what is said. Number two, you have responsibility to test. So put your, keep your hand on your heart and say, I have a responsibility to test every word. I have a responsibility to, uh, to test the word that comes to me. Okay, don't, don't test the word that goes to others. That's for them to test. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.20 says, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good. So take and test, treasure and trash. Uh, thirdly, take a sex to make sure it's strengthening, encouraging, comforting before you release it. And fourthly, um, propel, don't paralyze. In other words, if you see something really big for someone um, that might be so big that they just don't get how are they going to see it happen? Then uh, break it down into smaller pieces. Ask God, Holy Spirit, to show you smaller pieces on how to, uh, to, to what to say for them for the next step that they have to take. Okay. Thanks. I'm just going to stop my share for a moment. Um, could I get someone to please, uh, one of the leaders or leaders in trainers, to copy and paste those seven steps that are up in the chat group at the beginning? That'll be really great. Wonderful. All right. We are going to do a little bit of a um, run now, practical run, and I'm going to ask someone to volunteer. Um, so if your camera's on, probably you're going to be the one to get it because you're going to wave your hand in a minute. Who would like a prophetic word uh, for me to give you a prophetic word from heaven? Okay, just wave your hand. All right, Mary, I see your hand. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you for sharing that on the screen pops matthew all right so these are the seven steps so um now i have learned to as i'm talking to mary naturally start getting a picture at the same time um i don't close my eyes but you can close your eyes if you want to um but i suggest don't do that while you're driving and certainly don't do it while you're in a shopping center with a trolley because it does hurt people it doesn't kill lives with the first one but it does hurt people if you bang into something but if you can do it naturally such so imagination like right now with your eyes open how many of you could imagine a pink elephant yeah who could imagine a pink elephant? your eyes are open imagine a pink elephant under a tree under a blue tree john i want to hear what you imagine under a blue tree a tree with blue leaves and it's eating from the, the, the leaves and it's by itself, right? And oh, here comes another elephant, a little tiny elephant in orange in color. Yeah, everyone's seeing that? See, as we describe, our eyes are open, imagination takes place. That is the spirit of God, how we were created. The devil didn't create that. You certainly can't create that. And so God created us that way to be able to imagine. So you can do it with your eyes open as well. We're just used to having our eyes closed, all right? So Mary, Mary I didn't see a, a blue elephant for you, <laughs> a green elephant eating blue leaves. Actually, did I? Um, no. Um, so Mary, um, the picture I'm getting right now is, um, it's, 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 it's similar to what, uh, what Ken has got on his screen, which is this tree that's reflecting in the, in the ocean, but um, it's not, a tree that looks like that. It's this amazing, colorful tree of a uh, tree of different colors, but the colors are like infused in. I don't know if you've ever seen flowers that roses that they infuse the color into the rose, and it changes from to whatever color that they've infused it. And it's these these roses are flowers that have these amazing colors in them that were not natural, right? And so I see this this uh, tree, but it's actually a plant, and it's. Um, the ones that glow in the dark. So, this, so imagine that color. So as I'm describing, and here's one thing I love about pictures, everyone. Uh, when you describe a picture, people can start to envision it. And it's reflecting off the, the clearest of surfaces. Okay? And, and I felt the Lord saying that it doesn't matter the type of tree you are. It is what is being infused into you um, that is going to cause you to, uh, the beauty of will, will begin to flow. And, and so I just sense that the Lord is saying, and I feel the Lord is saying that he's uh, been over the years infusing different areas. So you're like multifaceted. You, you, everyone says you've got to choose one area and move in. And you're like, yeah, but I like this area. And I like this area. And I like praying in, in the spirit. But I also like going and telling people about Jesus. And I also like uh, administrating this. And I also like, and because that's who you are. It's like this tree, beautiful tree that had these different colors and they, they, they glowed in the dark but they were perfect reflection of the master of jesus but then i uh, also saw that it wasn't just a reflection of the master it was a reflection of your friend i no longer call you slaves a, a reflection of your friend 
and your friend is Jesus. He's not just your master. He's your friend. And I feel the Lord is saying, as you take, allow me, as you take on my form, you take on my form of friend because you'll be a friend to others and you will be able to come to them with whatever needs they have and meet those needs. Does that make sense to you, Mary? And feel free to unmute and share because this is a learning lesson right now. Yes, very good. What happened was um, these few days I was just talking to the Lord and then this was come to me as I behold him and transform from glory to glory to glory. So, so excited. Uh, and that is what is my heart desire, always to be a person of influence for Jesus in the most natural way, not supernatural way, a natural plus supernatural, you know, but uh, to be a person of influence because um, mm. the nature of my job allows me to do it. I'm a trainer. I meet many people. Uh, so I, the Lord just reminded me that that is what you wanted, right? To be an influence, right? So as you behold me, I'm, I've been transformed from glory to glory. Not my glory, his glory. Amen. Yeah, How awesome that. is that? So mm. exciting. Mm. Praise Hallelujah. Praise forward to that. Hey, Stephen, good to see you. Um, so now I'm going to do the next step, which is step number seven, um, which is I'm asking, so you've just received it and you're accepting it. And now I'm asking, can I release this over your life? So we're just doing a training, guys, with this. We're going to do it in breakout rooms. We're going to get you all to have a go. So I always ask permission um, over people that I don't know. I mean, in our environment here, we know it's going to release over you. But we often, will, if it's a new person that jumps in and we have a word for them and say, can we just release over you uh, what Holy Spirit is saying? So Mary, I'm going to pretend that the first time I've met you or we don't know each other very well because we are training you up with the idea of being able to even talk to people you don't know through this whole process as well. So uh, would you mind if we uh, just pray and release the word over you? Awesome. So that's all. Do this as a family. We stretch our hands out. So Father, we thank you for Mary. And I just begin to release that word right now in the name of Jesus. Begin to release that word of her pure reflection of who you are as master and as friend. Thank you that she can embrace fully all the aspects that you have infused into her. She doesn't have to change and pull out, but you are transforming her through that infusion, but you love who she is. You're just in transforming her to come bring out the best, the colors of who she is. And we release that over her life right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Awesome. Now, who else would like to get a word? We're going to do one, one more. And we're going to move from there. Uh, I've seen um, Stephen shake his hand and then Vivian. So we'll do Stephen first. Mary, you're going to help me um, because it's a training time. Yep. We're going to train very gently. Don't worry. I do. You help. So it's a 4D process. You don't have to get stressed and do this all by yourself. So um, we're going to get a word for Stephen. We're going to get a prophetic picture for Stephen. And uh, Mary, I just want you to take your time. And when you get a prophetic picture, just tell me. Can you hear me, Mary? I know you're plugging in. Make sure you can hear us. All right. So just ask God for an encouragement picture for Stephen. You know who Stephen is? Uh, Stephen, just kind of wave again. Stephen Laza. Yeah. Can you see Stephen there on the screen? Still can't see him. All right. Um, don't worry about seeing him then. <laughs> just get a word for him. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> Stephen, I can see you. So where'd you go? You, you, I just lost you. Oh, there you are, Stephen. Found you again. All right. Um, now, prophetic picture for Stephen. Um, Mary, if, you feel, can you, if you're getting something, just unmute and tell me you're getting something. I'll also get something with you. Okay. And don't worry about interpretation. One thing I found is that interpretation usually comes after the prophetic picture is gotten and after I start speaking it out. So sometimes I don't get the interpretation. I might get one or two words or clue, but it comes as I'm speaking it out. That's when the rest of it happens. And it could be not just a prophetic standstill picture. It could be actually a moving picture. And what I saw for you was a standstill, but I saw different details as we went along. But there are lots of times I get a moving picture. Um, so while I'm talking about this and instructing everyone and giving you guys instruction, I'm also looking to get a picture for, for Stephen. Um, so Stephen, um, the uh, the picture I saw, and I think I, I have a feeling that I've said this to you before in a different format, but I saw you as a gang, uh, one of those gang members um, with this huge 
chain around your neck and it had these huge um, loops of gold. Like there were chunks of gold just around your neck and you're like, hey, dude, what's up? And you were just like this cool guy that was walking around. And you look like, and you had, and now, and now I see you with this baseball cap, and it's like you, you know, in the old days we we're told if your baseball pack cap is not in the front, uh, facing the front, you're rebellious. But you were, you know, it's down on the side. You were wearing these jeans um, that were a little bit too big for you, um, you know, the baggy jeans kind of thing. And you were, uh, you were wearing these basketball boots, and you're just walking around with, hey guys, what's going on? You're hanging around with the hood, is what I saw. But the, what, what's really um, showing to me is this huge this chain around your neck with these big big locks it's like huge golden uh locks around and it's a very heavy chain um and it's pure gold it's made from pure gold um but it's it's not pure gold in 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 the world would be very soft and easy to break um and has to be mixed right this is pure gold but it was gold from heaven and it was unbreakable and um yeah and and so i felt the lord saying um Many times you feel like you, you, you put on the sense of you've got to be strong and you're unbreakable, but you feel like you're broken. And, but yet heaven says what you've put on is really what you are. You are unbreakable. And even if it seems like many situations in your life, past, present, and especially past, but right now even present stuff, where you feel like, oh, I can get through this, and then just, boom, I'm falling again. And you feel break, broken and breakable. You feel like you can't share it with others. Because when you try to share it with others, they don't get it because it doesn't correlate with, with the fact that you always talk, encourage everyone else. But the Holy Spirit says the way, what you have put on, that chain is made from pure gold in heaven. And even though it's heavy to the others to touch, it's light for you to carry. And you are unbreakable and heaven wants you to, re to remind you of that and and what you were wearing was that you are a person who can who's going to who's who crosses generations and you're going to cross into young generations and speak life into people in this weird way that's going to be so authentic and awesome that people who are from a, such a different culture to you in america in the u.s are going to just respond to you in just a great manner without real, and it's going to be non-religious people I see outside of the church. Amen. Um, does that make sense to you, Stephen? Now, you got to unmute, man. I can't hear you. You're going to unmute and tell us if that makes sense, and then Mary, you're going to have a go at getting a picture. Well, here's a testimony of that. Saturday, we were at a restaurant in Phoenix. We came for Phoenix, and we actually preached at a church on Sunday. Was very powerful but saturday uh, the waiter had he was laid out with tattoos heavy tattoos on his arms and one of the tattoos looked like the star of david i mm. said is that the star of david he goes no that's the dragon eating flesh of people mm. i said young man i have a word for you wow there is two places one is heaven and one is hell and Satan, who you are following, he will be burning in hell forever. And as long as you continue to follow him, that's your home. But the Lord is saying to you today, you don't have to go there because heaven is knocking on your door. He gave his life to Jesus right in front of the table, right while we were there. Now, and so uh, this obviously is a prophetic word. I must say, when you first started uh, I don't see myself dressing as a gangbanger, but the Holy Spirit was showing me that he's given me a gift to reach people where they're at. So yeah. I can deal with a gangbanger and be able to share with him or anyone else, because that's one of the gifts that I have as an evangelist is to reach people where they're at. And when we were at the church on Sunday, which we didn't even expect, we were visiting, it was called New Life Worship Center. Uh, Pastor Eldred said, uh, Evangelist Stephen prophets to us are here. We like them to come up. Next thing you know, the Holy Spirit just started flowing, speaking through me, giving a word, and baptizing the whole church with fresh fire. The God mm -hmm. of Israel then came through Prophet Joyce and told them about his great love, and people just began to weep. So I yes. give all the praise, glory, and honor to the Lord. I received the prophetic word. Amen. And um, I have a word for you that I just saw a picture of you 
All and right. I saw you were, you were, your shoe was actually next to you. Mm-hmm. And he had his arm around your shoulder and he was putting on a crown on your head and it was pure, it was golden fire, liquid. Mm-hmm. It was a liquid crown of fire, but it was gold. And he put it on your head and he was smiling and you were looking at each other. Wow. And you feel the Lord is saying? The Lord is saying, I'm putting on the crown of my glory upon you. He says, you have been faithful to reach many, but now I'm giving you uh, nations, even more. And my glory, the Godhead glory, will be seen wherever you go. And you are going to now take back territories, says the Lord. Mm-hmm. That when you plant your feet, wherever you plant your feet, it will bring that territory out of darkness into the light. That's what I feel the Lord is okay. saying for you. I receive it. Now, Stephen spoke to me in the language um, that I get. This makes you know this, and this excites me. Um, so this is what I'm saying. You know, when we when we interpret to people speaking the language that they understand. And I received that in Jesus' name. Now, I'm just going to go to Mary and say, Mary, did you get anything for Stephen? Because you're just helping. Just give it a try. Did you get any picture? You don't have to interpret it. I'm going to help you with it. Um, did you get any picture? Okay. Um, it's uh, first time, huh? So big. I didn't get uh, uh, my own picture, but I saw the picture that, you know, you've been putting, the, the picture of the person with the, all the colorful lights. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I saw it for him. It's like, uh, what you say and what he says is happening. Because we know Jesus is beautiful, he has colorful light. That's what's happening. His, the, the colorful light of Jesus is going to shine out just like the picture from his life to the lives of other people. I want you to speak yeah. to Stephen. This is awesome. So just tell Stephen, say, I feel, the, uh, describe what you just saw again and slow it down. Take your time. Describe what you saw and then say, I feel the Lord is saying, and then, this, and then interpret what you feel God is saying. And, and speak to him. Speak to Stephen himself. Right? Oh. Oh, you're doing awesome. Try it. Just say, okay. Stephen, I saw this. This is what I oh, felt no. God is saying. This is what I saw. And this is what I feel the Lord is saying. So just describe it again. Hi, Stephen. I, I feel like the Lord is saying uh, that you are a mighty warrior. And that because you love Jesus so much. His power in you is going to be radiant out to all that you come, to all that you come before, and that it will be an effortless uh, effort for them to know Jesus. Amen. Does that make sense? (laughs) I received that. Thank you. (laughs) I thank you for that word. Here's, Here's the interesting thing. How many of you noticed that when... Mary said, I feel the Lord is saying so much more came out than when she said before, I, I feel God is doing this for him and this is happening for him. And that, I mean, if you notice that uh, something happens and we say, I feel the Lord is saying, and we start to interpret yes. this. That's when Holy Spirit is given permission to now add and takes over. Yeah, it just flows. Right. And that's exciting. Right. So well done, Mary. That's it. You saw a picture. Now, it might have been a picture that was reminding you of something that you've seen before. That is perfectly fine. Heavenly Father can do that for us as we're learning. It reminds us of a picture. Like I'll sometimes see like just now I saw Ken's. Now Ken has been on. He just went off. And then I saw the reflection of that tree. And then I saw the rest of it. Right. Um, and so I used that was what God used for me. But it was in my imagination what I, I saw. But sometimes it can be prompted by stuff around. Okay. Awesome. Um, we want to do one more. Uh, which is Vivian. We want to just do one more, and then we're going to do breakout rooms. Um, so uh, now I want Mary and Stephen to help me and uh, to get a word for Vivian, get a picture for Vivian, and we're going to just practice this. So we're going to be, it's going to be encouraging, it's going to be uplifting, it's going to be um, comforting, and we're going to speak picture first and then interpret what it says. So um, either of you, if you've got a picture, you can go just, just, Go first, otherwise I'm looking to get a picture as well. And we'll see who, between the three of us who goes first. Right? Is everyone is this making sense to others? Is what we're gonna do in our room? Is how we're just gonna just go through a process of slowly training people to hear. 
I have a picture for Vivian. I, I don't see Vivian, so I don't know what it is, but I know what I saw. She was on camera and she's just gone off camera. Vivian, are you with us? Just make sure she's, she's hearing. Awesome. Yep, she's back on camera. So uh, go for it, Stephen. Shalom, Vivian. Um, I have a picture that I'd like to share with you. I feel this is uh, what I saw. And I saw you dancing in the spirit. And what I saw is at first you were just dancing at one level on the earth. But as you began to praise the Lord and sing unto the Lord, you literally started to go up towards heaven. And you get started going higher and higher and higher. And then there was a new garment of praise that came upon you. And it was, uh, it was illuminated, white glistening. And the master was above you. And he was sending his light to you and smiling upon you. And he was very happy at your worship. That's what I feel the Lord was saying, that he is bringing you to a new level of worship in the beauty of his holiness. Amen. Woohoo! Awesome. Uh, Mary, awesome, Stephen. Thank you. Mary? Yeah. Hi, Vivian. Uh, Mary here. What I saw was uh, you were wearing... Yeah, you're wearing a nice gown, but this gown looks like a queen, a queen gown, and with a tiara, all right? And I felt like the Lord is telling you, uh, like Deborah in the, in the Bible, Judge Deborah, you know, she was a very powerful woman. She spoke for yes. uh, what, the word, what the Lord wanted her to tell. So um, in that way, I, I felt like the Lord is saying that uh, you will be just like Deborah, so don't be afraid to say what you need to say. Say it out. And, and I, I see you like a queen. You know? So uh, does that make sense to you? And Ruben? The Holy Spirit is all over that. Man, I just, I am, uh, you know, uh, I thank God something. We can sense the presence of Jesus in what is what's being said. So Vivian, the the... Just, just to add to what they're saying, the, um, the, 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 the picture I got was a, a, a princess who's a warrior, you know, a fighter, but not one who is killing humans, but one who's standing up to bring humans, reconcile humans back to God. And you're coming against sickness, disease. You're coming against uh, atmospheres that are, that, are, that are just, you know, that are toxic. And I see you with... Um, with all this equipment that is kind of like new technology equipment uh, as you move around in the, in, in where setting people free. And I feel the Lord is saying that, um, that you are called to stand up for, for injustice. You are called and you, you have wrongly thought it is to come against human enemies because that's how you were brought up um, in the, in the culture of, of the day. But now you're recognizing it's to stand up and prophesy, declare heaven's best over nations, over people, over homes. And as you declare it, like literally, it's like you banging your staff down of authority and boom, stuff is just going to take place. And you'll start seeing that first in your home. So when Stephen said about the dancing um, and there's a new journey, I just sensed a new atmosphere in your home. You're going to see it in your work a work situation in your in, in finances you're going to see it in relationships all of a sudden this joy is just going to emanate and it's going to be very very exciting amen um Ruben, Vivian, can i share something that i got for her as well while this was being said yep, um, yep that, go for it. the story of jehoshaphat this is what i feel was being said because remember he sent the praisers out first and the enemies were destroyed so I saw when you were praising, uh, the angels were being dispatched to declare war on the enemy. And so the praise is one of your major weapons of, war, uh, of warfare, because the Lord is saying, what I feel he's saying is, as you're worshiping the Lord and, and join it with your prayers, now the heavens, angels are dispatched 
to take out the enemies uh, through your praise and worship. Wow. Amen. So awesome. You see, as we've, as we've started saying something, uh, again, now is more being added on in, what, in the interpretation of what was being said. Um, Mary, you had something extra to add? Oh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, Vivian, time, you, you have a chance to respond. Yeah, um, yeah, it every word uh, is a resounding, even as uh, first, firstly, when we were beginning, when you were asking uh, about the pictures we were seeing, you, I saw myself adorned in white as a princess. And then the Lord has been overly speaking to me about uh, taking me to the next level in worship and praise, because that is the place of uh, I don't know. Can I say stronghold or strength for me? That is the is the, uh, the place of, of strength that the Lord has as a. Okay, I'm not called into <laughs> music ministry, but uh, I mean worship and praise is what the Lord is really uh, wanting me to to grow into because that is the area of warfare for me. Yeah, so it resounds with me, and I'm grateful. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Wow. What yeah, what an exciting. Awesome. How, how yeah. good is our God? Amen. So, um, yeah, I am. Uh, this is this is this is what this is what this is about. This is us uh, learning to be a company of prophets and not making it so complicated, keeping it simple because God is in the simple. Amen. Now, he, 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 he can affect the com most complex person in this world, but he's into the simple. And the God, repent for the kingdom of God has come. That's it. You know, repent and believe the kingdom of God is here. That's all he, he that's the promise he has for us. Um, so we're going to break up into rooms right now. You have, um, you have leaders, Pops Matthew, Papa Luke, Pastor John and Pastor Edwina, Pastor Rubika and myself, that you will get an opportunity to practice. You have permission to practice. Um, it's all right if you get it wrong or if you don't know how to do something. There is no pressure in, in on, on you that you have to, uh, make this happen or you have to perform god's not into performance in in to like love us he's saying because i love you and i'm broadcasting to you give this a go amen so we're going to go into rooms for about 45 minutes or so and um with the uh leaders um pastor john pastor edwina anything you wanted to add before we jump into the room no okay papa pa luke pops matthew Pops is good. Papa Luke. Ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. Rubika. Pastor Rubika, all good? All good. Ready to go. Awesome. Um, now, when we get into the rooms, uh, your leaders will give you two opportunities. One is as a hot spot seat. Hot seat, we call it. Hot spot, sorry, hot seat. <laughs> where, where we get to, someone gets to be the one who says, give me a word. And then we just get gather around them on Zoom and give a prophetic picture. Or the other option that your leaders might give you is you know, hear someone get a picture for them and then they'll encourage you through it okay so take your time enjoy and we'll Ruben. see you guys back here Ruben. hi i'm gonna just say i need to get some sleep <laughs> um who is who is next to you who is next to me this is my girlfriend okay that's my wife. Word. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. That's my wife, Gertrude. I know. I have. <laughs> <It's> silent. <laughs> I got a picture for her. Please feel free. <laughs> I saw, um, you know, when you see a cloud and it, it's a dark cloud, but all of a sudden there's pinholes and rays of light come through the cloud. And at first there was a cloud over you. This is what I feel. Uh, what I saw was the cloud was a dark cloud over you and you were looking up and it was like, you were saying, I don't see the light, Lord, where's the light? And then all of a sudden the pinholes of light started coming upon you. And the first there were little holes and then all of a sudden it burst open and the darkness was gone. And the glory of the Lord came upon you, and you were being consumed in the glory of the Lord. And what I feel the Lord is saying is 
He's saying, I'm bringing you uh, into a place to see my glory in even though darkness in the scripture that comes on, uh, deep darkness, Isaiah 60, but my glory is upon you. Rest in my glory. Keep focused on my glory and not on the darkness of what you see around you. This is what I feel the Lord is saying for you. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does make a lot of sense. I, have, I was just in so many situations. I just want to see God's glory in whatever deep situation it is or dark. I just been praying over uh, a few months or a few, maybe a year or something. I just told God, I need to see your glory in every situation. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we'll let you go get some sleep, Stephen, and I'm going to open up the rooms for everyone Thanks. else. Have a Thank good you, morning over there. Love you. Talk to you Love soon. You. Rooms are Bye -bye. open, guys. Jump into your rooms, and uh, we'll see you back.